To say that this pandemic has given global supply chains a run for their money is an understatement. It has exposed massive inefficiencies in how goods are transported around the world and shown us how quickly things can break down when the heat is on. We've not only seen shortages of critical resources such as PPE, medicine and toilet paper, but we've even seen an oversupply of non-essential goods which had to be thrown out or destroyed, all because of broken supply chains. This has accelerated the use of blockchain by both governments and businesses in their supply chain processes. While most of the blockchains used by these institutions have been private blockchains, public cryptocurrency blockchains have also been tapped to redesign global supply chains. Given that we're at the start of another bull market, this will eventually turn the spotlight onto the cryptocurrency space, giving supply chain cryptocurrencies like VeChain, Walton Chain, and Hedera Hashgraph a time to shine. This just might lead to even more adoption of cryptocurrency blockchains in global supply chains. Could we see these cryptocurrencies go to all-time highs as a result? Stay tuned to find out. Before we break out the blockchains, there's some fine print I need to tell you about. I am not a financial advisor, and so nothing I say during this video should be considered financial or investment advice. But man, imagine if I was, huh? In all seriousness, everything you hear and see during this video is for educational purposes only. My name is Guy, and I am the lead detective here at the Coin Bureau. I search high and low to uncover some of the best cryptocurrencies, exchanges, DeFi protocols, spicy news, and other hot topics. If this is the stuff that makes your world go round, better head on over to that subscribe button and click it. Pinging the notification bell will make sure you're keeping up to date with the crypto space. I've even sprinkled a few timestamps right over here, which you can use to teleport to the topics you fancy the most. If you want to jump around, then I won't be offended in the slightest. All set? All right, let's see just how broken these supply chains are and how crypto can fix them. Imagine a world without toilet paper. For those of you living in the UK or North America, you don't need to imagine it because you've been there. Toilet paper is just one of many items that was in short supply at the start of this pandemic. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, such as face masks, also became like gold dust overnight. Even the chemicals required to make COVID tests became a rarity. While a part of these shortages was certainly due to a lack of production and occasional protectionism, inefficient supply chains were equally to blame, if not more so. In our modern globalised world, almost nothing is made entirely in-house, and even if an item is manufactured in the country it's being sold in, chances are that at least some of the raw materials were sourced from elsewhere. This means that for almost every item you could buy, it was made and distributed using dozens of supply chains. Not surprisingly, this means that the supply chain market is also extremely lucrative. The exact value of the global supply chain industry is a bit hard to pin down since it varies depending on your definition. For example, the global supply chain management market is only worth around $20 billion, but is expected to double over the next decade. The value of the entire supply chain market, on the other hand, is well into the tens of trillions of dollars. And some estimate that the value of the digital supply chain market is likewise worth trillions of dollars at the very least. This is the market that crypto projects like VeChain, Walton Chain, and Hedera Hashgraph, as well as many others, have been trying to establish themselves in with varying degrees of success. And now that governments and companies around the world are realizing how broken their supply chains really are, they're turning to blockchain to not only bulletproof their supply chains, but also reduce costs to dampen the impact of the economic fallout this pandemic has caused. But how exactly can blockchain help improve these supply chains? According to Don Tapscott's book titled The Supply Chain Revolution, most supply chains around the world use email, phone, and fax to keep track of the flow of goods and services. As we've seen, this shaky foundation does not fare well when put under pressure. Although this mostly results in shortages, some countries, such as Canada, have shown us that the opposite can happen. 
Canadian farmers had to dump millions of pounds of potatoes and millions of gallons of milk, despite the fact that many Canadians were simultaneously struggling to put food on the table. This is mainly because these goods were supposed to be delivered to restaurants, and supply chains were not able to adapt fast enough to distribute these goods in a different way before they expired. There are many ways blockchain fixes these supply chain issues. Firstly, blockchain can drastically improve the transportation of sensitive goods. You've probably heard about the recent vaccine developed by Pfizer that's showing a lot of promise for fighting COVID. You may also have heard that this vaccine needs to be kept very cold during transport or else it loses its efficacy. While Pfizer is planning to ship these vials using their own distribution methods, countries cannot be 100% certain that the correct conditions have been kept up throughout the whole supply chain. The only technology that could really guarantee oversight in a completely transparent and immutable way is a blockchain. Blockchain would also help reduce the incidence of wasted food and foodborne illnesses by tracking production from farm to fingers. Second, blockchains can improve transaction settlements between retailers and suppliers. As we all know, blockchain has been revolutionary when it comes to payment mechanisms. They make it possible to do things like create a smart contract that will automatically pay a supplier when certain conditions are met, such as shipping, or delivering the goods or services a retailer ordered. This is a huge step up from the costly and time-consuming invoicing processes used by most supply chains, which can sometimes take months to settle payments. Third, blockchains can bring transparency to both consumers and producers. Oddly enough, this pandemic has led to a spike in the sale of counterfeit goods. This might be a part of the reason why so many luxury brands have been turning to blockchain in recent months to assure their customers that their stimulus money is being spent on a real pair of Gucci flip-flops. More importantly, it will also allow a retailer to immediately see that they're running low on a certain product across their various locations and warehouses. Indeed, they could potentially even see whether the supplier is also running low and if there are any others which can shoulder that demand. This brings me to the fourth fix blockchains bring – adaptability. When one supply chain is cut off, it needs to be possible to easily switch to another as seamlessly as they can. Taking down a whole new set of names, emails, phone numbers, and fax numbers is not seamless. Simply requesting access to another supply chain's blockchain is. This begs the question, where do cryptocurrency blockchains fit into this picture? Over the past few months alone, there have been a handful of instances of cryptocurrency blockchains being used to optimize supply chains. In September, VeChain joined China's Animal Health and Food Safety Alliance as a council member, providing supply chain support to over 130 companies, including McDonald's, Starbucks, and Walmart. That same month, it was announced that Hedera Hashgraph had partnered with supply chain firm Entrust to track wine production in South Australia. In October, Tezos helped the Swiss town of Weizsikon distribute financial aid to its residents as part of their COVID response efforts. There have also been multiple donation initiatives from the cryptocurrency space to help fight the pandemic. For example, you had donations from Binance's Crypto Against COVID initiative, which has been tracking where received donations are being allocated. Many international charities also opened their coffers to cryptocurrency donations this year. But that's about as far as it goes. The adoption of cryptocurrency blockchains for supply chain use cases has been quite frankly unimpressive, except for VeChain, and almost all of their adoption has taken place in China. Why is this the case? Well, a news headline from earlier this year gives us a hint. In January, it was announced that Covantis, a supply chain consortium founded by some of the world's largest agriculture companies, reached out to crypto software company Consensus to help build their blockchain network. However, Covantis isn't going to use a cryptocurrency blockchain for its supply chain. Instead, Covantis will be using Quorum, which is essentially a privatized copy Ethereum made by JP Morgan with the help of Consensus. You see, private companies are not all that keen on using public and permissionless blockchains. After all, they want to be able to keep sensitive data out of sight of the public eye. They're also likely hesitant to adopt cryptocurrency blockchains due to regulatory ambiguity. 
This is the opinion of Dr. Robert Lerney, a blockchain technologist who works in the medical field here in the United Kingdom. It certainly doesn't help that ransomware attacks involving cryptocurrency have been on the rise this year, and many have actually targeted the very medical institutions and supply chains that crypto projects are hoping to cater to. Most importantly, tech giants like IBM, Microsoft, and Google already provide several services to supply chain companies around the world, and therefore have a solid foothold in the industry. You can bet they will fight tooth and nail to maintain their dominance. And if cryptocurrency projects do start to gain ground, all these tech giants have to do is show their clients a new story of the latest ransomware attack. In the case of VeChain, they just have to point to that hack in December 2019. While cryptocurrency adoption may be growing in the financial sector, I think we're a long way from serious crypto adoption in the realm of supply chains. However, there is one thing that could accelerate that. I have a surprise quiz for you folks. Don't worry, I think most of you will pass with flying colours. It's just two questions long. Here is the first. Is the Bitcoin blockchain decentralised? Second, is JP Morgan's Quorum blockchain decentralised? Well done. Surprised? If you are, it's probably because you've fallen prey to the misconception that all blockchains are decentralized by definition. This is not necessarily the case, and is why you will sometimes see the term distributed ledger technology used interchangeably with blockchain when governments or companies talk about their blockchain developments. This is because distributed ledger is a more accurate term to describe the setups they actually have. If you asked JP Morgan, to show you where their quorum blockchain is, they would probably show you a building or possibly even a single room with dozens of connected servers collectively keeping track of a database. Or more likely get their lawyers to issue a cease and desist order, but I digress. So, although their blockchain is decentralized in the sense that if a single server fails, the network won't go down, it is still quite clearly centralized. Compare that to a blockchain like Bitcoin, which has thousands of miners and nodes spread across the globe. Not only is there no single point of failure, but there's also no single entity which has backdoor access to the entire network, which I am sure JP Morgan has when it comes to its quorum chain and everyone using it over at Cavantis. Why is this important? Well, the whole point of blockchain is decentralization, meaning no single point of failure. But all of these supply chain blockchains being built by tech companies are extremely centralized. Even if they are using more than one physical location to store their blockchain, I could comfortably bet my Bitcoin that they have God mode admin keys to that chain and all of the data being transmitted on it. In other words, transparency for me, not for thee. Supply chain companies will be happy to partner with the tech giants until their centralized blockchains go down, experience a glitch, or they find out that they've been secretly harvesting their data for malicious purposes. I mean, it's not like these tech giants have a history of shady practices or anything. To achieve true decentralization, you need to have financial incentives which motivate people to maintain a decentralized network. This is why you get cryptocurrency as a reward for mining or running a node. And it's why you can be punished for being offline for too long or acting maliciously by having your stake slashed on many proof-of-work blockchains. What do you think the punishment for these tech giants will be if they act maliciously or their blockchains experience significant downtime? It will be them watching us ride the V-chain train to the moon when all their clients come rushing to the crypto space for solutions. However, there is another possible outcome to this thought experiment that is not nearly as nice. Blockchain is a powerful technology that can be good or evil depending on how it's being used. It makes me happy when I read about Bitcoin being used by people in Venezuela and Lebanon, for example, to protect their wealth against the failed monetary policies of their governments. I can't say the same when I read about authoritarian regimes using blockchain to keep an even closer eye on their populations. Clearly, one of these scenarios is not like the other, and this misuse of blockchain is what I want to cover before we wrap things up. While researching this video, I came across an interesting article by Coindesk, which I'll leave in the video description. 
In it, the author describes how supply chain blockchains can be used to artificially inflate the price of certain goods and services to change consumer behavior. Given that this sort of price manipulation will require centralized control, it really makes me wonder who will get to decide what sort of consumer behavior will be changed and what that process will look like. Something tells me it won't be very democratic. In my humble opinion, that would be too much power for any single institution or individual to have, and it flies directly in the face of the decentralized ethos of cryptocurrency. I think this commitment to things like decentralization, privacy, and self-ownership is part of the reason why we haven't seen any cryptocurrency projects developing these digital identities and COVID contact tracing applications. Either that, or the degree of privacy and data ownership that a crypto-made ID or tracing app would have does not jive with the amount of information that government authorities want their citizens to provide. That's a scary thought. But to be frank, it is a legitimate concern to have. Authorities around the world are asking people to give up a degree of freedom, privacy, and autonomy that most are not comfortable with giving away. It's being done in the name of fighting a global virus, and rightfully so. But as with everything, the right course of action is probably somewhere in the middle. And I, like many others, do not know where that middle ground is. What I do know, however, is that one of the worst side effects of this pandemic has been an increase in the centralization of power in both the public and private sector. And the real tragedy is that many of the issues these centralized entities are now trying to solve could be better solved using a decentralized approach with honest economic incentives. Their centralized blockchain solutions are just going to make things worse. All we can do is show them the alternative and lead by example. All right, team, time for a quick double take. This pandemic has shown us just how broken and outdated our supply chains are. Thankfully, blockchain technology is here to bring this supply chain industry to the 21st century. Optimizing the transportation of sensitive goods, such as vaccines, facilitating payments between suppliers and retailers, increasing the transparency of the production process, and facilitating the creation of new supply routes are just a few of the perks blockchain can bring to supply chains. While trillions of dollars stand to be made, tech giants like IBM, Microsoft, and Amazon seem to already have their fangs buried deep in the supply chain market. Although there doesn't seem to be much room for crypto projects to get any serious footing for the time being, the decentralized blockchains that tech giants are building appear to be quite vulnerable to all the threats of centralization, including outages, hacks, and malicious activities. As institutions become more comfortable with cryptocurrencies and regulatory frameworks are hammered out, cryptocurrency projects that specialize in supply chain technologies could potentially overtake these tech giants as the cracks in their blockchains start to show. Blockchain is a powerful technology, and in the hands of centralized entities, it could be easily abused. As cryptomaniacs, it's on us to spread the good word of decentralization. And we should show the world how honest and transparent financial incentives can be used to build that better world we keep on hearing about. If you made it this far, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. As you may know, it gives the YouTube algorithm a hint that there's something good going on here. If you did enjoy the video, then why not burn a calorie by smashing that like button, destroying that subscribe button, and blowing up that notification bell. Exercise is good for you after all. If you cannot get enough of crypto, why not consider subscribing to my newsletter using the link in the description. Doing so will give you an all-access pass to exclusive crypto tips, tricks, treats, and other goodies that you'll not want to miss. And if you're a real die-hard Bureau fan, then you can now show the world by getting your very own Coin Bureau t-shirt. There are a lot of other hot designs there for you to choose from. Link to that is also in the description. That's all for now, chaps and chapesses. I'll see you all in the next one.